What's happening YouTube? Today I'm reviewing the Fuji XF 55 to 200 millimeter lens. I've had this lens for almost a year now and I've shot some of my favorite photos of 2019 with it, but it's also my least favorite Fuji lens to use. So as with all of my reviews, this will not be a super highly technical review. It's just kind of my thoughts and my review on my own experiences using the lens and how I've found it to be. So it's more of a, a practical review than a technical review. So starting with the size, this lens is about the same size as the Canon 55 to 250, which is a little bit lower end lens, but has a longer focal range, but uh, and is, it's, it's about that size. It's also about the same length as the Canon 24 to 70 lens. Um, it's not as wide, maybe not quite as heavy, but it's not that far off. It's a fairly large lens to have on the X-T2. It makes it feel slightly more front heavy. Um, maybe that's just because the lens is longer and some of the weight is further forward. It doesn't feel like overly cumbersome or difficult to use. It just feels bigger than the, the kit lens and the little prime lenses that a lot of people use with the X-T2. In terms of weight, it's about 550 grams, which I forget what that is in pounds, but I'll put it on the screen, which makes it not a particularly heavy lens. But as I said, it feels kind of heavy on the Fuji X system. And for me, it's enough that I kind of notice it after carrying it around for a while. And I much prefer to have this lens just as an extra lens in my bag when I go hiking. When it's in my bag, it's not heavy enough to make my pack feel any heavier than I would want it to be. To be honest, it's not even that much heavier than the 56 millimeter lens, but I think it's just because of the length of it and the weight distribution is further forwards. I think I'm just biased towards the shorter stubby prime lenses and that's just what I'm used to on the Fuji system. So the build quality, it's, it's a solid feeling lens. It, it does not feel like a cheaply built lens at all and I would expect that with the price of it. The zoom lens is fairly thick. It has pretty good resistance on there. It's not in the way when I'm holding onto the lens, so there's no fear of really bumping it. The zoom ring is very thick, it's rubberized, um, but for me, it's too stiff. Um, I would like it to be less difficult to turn. I just find that it makes it kind of a chore to zoom in. It almost moves within the mount of the camera when I'm turning it. It's It's far stiffer than I would like it to be. Um, the aperture ring feels fine. It's just the right amount of resistance there. It's nice and clicky. It feels very confident, if that's that's a good way to describe an aperture ring. Um, it feels better than the one on the 56 millimeter 1.2, in my opinion. Uh, the same with these buttons. They're solid enough. I don't, they're kind of out of the way that I don't feel like I'm ever accidentally bumping them. So uh, yeah, build quality is great. Now the sharpness, this, this is a nice sharp lens, even across most of the focal range. It's at 55 millimeters at its widest aperture. It's sharp in the center, pretty sharp out in the corners. And at 200 millimeters, the center's nice and sharp and maybe not quite as sharp in the corners, but not so much that I would find it unusable or that I would really be complaining about it. Like I, I have no complaints with any of the pictures or sharpness that I've found from this lens. So for low light, this lens is not meant to be a low light lens. It's probably not gonna be the one that you grab for when you're going out to shoot at night. Uh, that's because it has a, a 3.5 aperture at its widest focal length and it only goes down from there as you zoom in. If you have a tripod and you don't mind doing longer exposures, then you probably wouldn't have any complaints about using this in low light. It might be actually really good for that. And the optical image stabilization definitely helps a lot as long as your subject isn't really moving. And one thing that I do appreciate about these Fuji X zoom lenses is that they're a slightly wider aperture than a lot of the equivalent um, zoom lenses that you would get in other camera systems, which makes it slightly better in low light situations than what you might buy from another camera system. But uh, yeah, still not a great low light lens. All right, so the Bokeh, this is again, not designed to be one of those lenses that gives you the most blurry, blown out, like creamy, smooth backgrounds. However, it does not too bad at it. At 55 millimeters, a 3.5 aperture can give you a pretty nice blurry background, especially if you get close enough to your subject. And at 200 millimeters, you're gonna get great blurry backgrounds and you'll probably have no complaints there. Really the best way to get it is to get closer to your subject and have the background further away um, or have your subject further away and put something in the foreground, like shoot through something so that that becomes the out of focus 
focus area instead of it like in the foreground instead of it being in the background but yeah there are a lot of other lenses like the 56 1.2 that will give you super blurry backgrounds or foregrounds much more easily than it is to get with this so the focusing this lens focuses fine it's fast enough when you have good bright conditions and the lens doesn't have to move across the whole focus scale to find it but i find once you get any slightly dimmer light and maybe you're zoomed in really far the lens can take a lot longer to to figure out where the focus point should be and when i've been closer to subjects a couple times it's actually just given up completely. The focus and distance is actually pretty good. You can get almost macro-like images, maybe not quite, but like I was pretty impressed with how close this lens can actually focus. One downside that I find is if you're focused on something at 55 millimeters, and you zoom in as you move through the focal range, it will become more and more out of focus and you have to refocus when you get to whatever zoom level you want. So if you go from 55 to 200, it throws the focus way off and then at 200 millimeters you might have that slow focusing thing so it can kind of slow you down a little bit in that sense. The stabilization is pretty good. It's probably not the best stabilization out there but it's really handy to have especially at longer focal lengths. One thing that I think it's probably not good for is video. Using stabilization during video is fine if you're holding the camera straight pointing at something. But as soon as you start to move and pan, it can get a little bit jittery. That kind of ruins it for a video, if you ask me. So the value of this lens, at $699, it's not a particularly cheap lens. It's fairly pricey, but it is better than other similar lenses that I've used. It's definitely a lot better than the old Canon 55 250 that I had, but I would expect that for the jump in price and I think I feel like it is worth that extra bit of money. That's slightly wider than standard aperture that it comes with, uh, it really helps. Uh, the optical image stabilization is nice to have and the image quality that it produces is, is good. It's sort of on par for that price point. For some photographers, this is likely to be a very good value lens. I think its best use is probably going to be for landscape photographers. Maybe some lifestyle and portrait photographers will also get good use out of it. And probably a more casual sports shooter who only shoots maybe their kids' sports games outdoors um, are likely to use it. It's definitely not going to be an indoor sports kind of lens. And for sure, I don't think wedding photographers would get enough value out of this lens. It would be fine for some outdoor ceremonies where you really maybe aren't allowed to go very close. Once you get into a church or darker environment, I would not want to have this lens on my camera. So versatility, this is I don't think this is a versatile lens. And while I don't find it that versatile, I always want to have it in my bag when I'm traveling or shooting landscapes. And as I said before, despite the fact that it produces great image quality, it's my least favorite lens to use. I find it feels a little bit more cumbersome on the X-T2 and a lot less fun to use than those little prime lenses. Nevertheless, I've taken some of my favorite photos of 2019 with this lens so I still like to have it in my bag when I go places and I think it's earned its place in my kit. Overall, this is a reasonably compact lens with a good zoom range, solid build quality, good image quality, a slightly wider than average aperture, decent stabilization and a good price point for the quality. I would not recommend it to wedding photographers, most sports photographers or wildlife photographers, but I think it would be a great lens for landscape photographers, travel photographers, and maybe the odd portrait photographer as well. If you enjoy this type of video, hit the subscribe button. I make new videos every week. Let me know if you're thinking about buying this lens or if you already have it and there's anything that I missed or anything you disagree with. Also hit the like button if you wanna see some more review type videos. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.